Hello, hello, it's Simone. Let's struggle together in another scrapbooking process video. I am going to <laughs> scrapbook my very first Halloween layout. I'm going to scrapbook this photo. And today I am participating in this Dash Bash YouTube hop and the <laughs> topic is mists. And these are the <laughs> three mists I own. And if you wonder, yes, I am wearing the exact same giraffe suit as I am wearing in the photo. And I used a cut file from the paper issues store that I resized to work with my uh, silhouette portrait. I do not have a cameo so I have to downsize um, 12 by 12 cut files and yeah I struggled with this all morning because I couldn't get the uh, cut file to cut and I couldn't. Then when I when it finally worked I quickly realized that this Downsizing this cut file wasn't the best idea because the teeny tiny spider web um, lines were so so delicate and it was such a pain in the in the behind to actually get the cut file off the mat and out of the paper. But I was stubborn and persisted and this is what it looks like on the right. And now I'm going to start and work on my background and I have no idea what I'm going to do. I did not prime my paper with gesso, which would have been a great idea. Now I'm grabbing some packaging and trying the packaging technique, but it doesn't work. It does not really work very well on paper that is not primed with gesso. So I'm taking the mist and just spritzing it on the background. And I am not <laughs> using anything to protect my te desk because I couldn't be bothered. And then um, after I did that, I used the mist to just splatter some ink on. Same with the H Heidi Swap Color Shine in Tinsel, I think. I don't even know what the black, it's another glimmery mist, uh, what brand or whatever this is. I received it from uh, um, Paige Evans when she was still living in Germany. Uh, she sold some of her boxes off to <laughs> German scrapbookers and I purchased one of the box and that was in there. And then I used some Heidi Swap gold color shine because I needed that and again added some splatters and now I am unpacking all of my goodies and I'm not sure what size of uh, photo I'm going to use. So I printed this photo in 4x6 as well as in 3x4 and now I'm going through all of the um, papers that I pulled. I This f summer I was very successful at a local scrapbooking store's garage sale um, where people sell their stuff or a flea market and someone sold off a lot of their October afternoon stash and I spent tons of money. Um, yeah just getting <laughs> looking through all the stuff and getting everything October afternoon and I have a lot of the witch hazel collection which is a Halloween collection and yeah it's the first time that I'm working with these products and I have never had any of those bits from October afternoon and most of them were way too precious to put behind my photo as layers so I, I will end up using only a little bit of it, but I think it works really, really well. It, I don't need a lot of stuff to, um, to use. And then I am thinking about backing the spider webs with the different pattern papers. And I'm trying it on the middle one because that would be probably covered by the photos and just to see what it looks like. And if I like it, I'll do well, work on the rest and see how that works. But then, as you can s not see anything right here, I decide to divide up the spider webs into teeny tiny ones and use them as embellishments. So I'm backing this, each one of the tiny spider webs with, um, with different pattern papers. And now I'm looking for layers for my photo, but I decide, no, I don't like the so the spider webs are very organic and it feels like this is going to be some kind of signature uh, thing that I'm doing is fuzzy cutting the photos 
because now I really like what it looks like and I am using the pattern paper as a layering element behind my photo and I actually don't use a lot of paper this is I think that I'm going to use one more layer and that's it and now I'm yes I decide I'll just cut them apart and use all the different papers that I just pulled to back my spider web my spider webs and I really really like how that turns out in the end so I'm very messy um, and <laughs> you will see in the end where this leads to but uh, yeah if you are not as messy as me I would highly recommend you using some kind of um, not gluing your spider web on a pattern paper because it will get sticky also not on the table because it will get sticky and everything will stick and it's just not the best thing to do. So I didn't make you watch all of the uh, backing and fuzzy cutting. So I cu fuzzy cut the spider webs out of the paper again. And now I am again using, yeah, I pulled out some foam, right? Because I want to prop up my photo of the spider web background and I placed the spider webs around my photo and that is what I mean uh, they are or organic somehow I can't seem to like I don't really like <laughs> yeah see the mists weren't dry and I just turned my photo around and added the um the foam and the glue on the back and then this is what happens the whole photo is messed up and I really have to replace it I just didn't have the time yet to go and print the photo again um, I w but I will pull out the layout once I'm done um, once I print another batch of photos and just add it take this off I am I made sure not to glue anything to the photo and not you to use too much glue so I can actually yeah remove it and replace it and yeah so what I was talking about the organic thing so I have a hard time placing a boxy photo on top of organic shapes and every time uh, this happens I seem to just um, fuzzy cut my photo so this is the embellishment where I'm right now I really like how the spider webs uh, wrap around my photo I really really like that uh, pumpkin with the owl and then there were those cake toppers or cupcake toppers they are probably not supposed to be that way but I, I really like those and I really liked how they they looked and I decided to just stick them in on the side and use them for um yeah another embellishment and i'm looking there is one that says happy halloween i really liked the green color there um it doesn't appear anywhere else on the layout but it's it's okay i think it really pops over there and why not have a color pop there is a circular element that says october 31st i put that on the flag on the left side and now I'm looking for more things to layer and you know me either I'm not layering at all and not using many embellishments or I'm using like tons and tons so this feels really strange because this looks like a layout where I could use a lot of embellishments but I don't it doesn't really fit and so I'll embrace the half <laughs> embellished layout uh, and in the end w once I'm done I really feel that it looks okay it doesn't need that much because there's so much going on with the different spider webs and the mist in the background so it's okay and now I'm I, uh, you know me another thing that I really like is mixing alphabets and I thought I would mix but I just didn't have any matching alphabets in my stash uh, you see the pile on the left and they just didn't look right so I decide to just use continue using this um, puffy alphabet set that is I think it is a pebbles one or it goes with a pebbles collection uh, it was in our 
in the September Coco Daisy scrapbooking kit, the memory keeping 12 by 12 main thing thingy. And um, then there is this strange gap in the with the ore. And so I'm just placing two stars there because it, it works better. And then I have to um, do some surgery on the T because I did not have another T. And so I just used an L and cut off another piece of another some letter there again it's not white trapped white space because basically it's not trapped but it just didn't look really right that the title was sticking out from underneath the pumpkin and so uh, i decided to just add some layers there and i will then pull out another alphabet sticker sheet and add the year which is 2016 and I have the date and you know <laughs> when are you going trick-or-treating on October 31st so it, you don't really need the date and it's on there on the sticker um, yeah and this is I think where I bring in more of the teal uh, the greenish colors it's a really old um, alphabet sticker sheet from the from a studio calico collection it was one of the first scrapbooking products that I actually bought and now I am pulling out some em enamel dots because I thought that uh, those would just work well with all of the splatters and just um, add another layer of texture and I am combining three different kinds they are there is jelly bean soup ones those are um, sequins, gold sequins that are backed with stickiness already. Then I have uh, October, no, not October afternoon. Pebbles ones should be, and um, old studio calico ones. And if you remember my struggles last last time with my uh, video with my journaling, I promised myself I would pre-write my journaling so that I knew what I was going to say and that is exactly what I did and now I'm copying the journaling onto the background and I don't really mind that it is muted and stick not doesn't stick out that much because it does it says a lot of things but it's not really that important um, and it not doesn't need to be readable um, from the beginning. If you're interested in reading and knowing more about the background, then you can read it and then you will actually uh, find a way. And now I'm placing another set of um, embellishment cluster or what are those enamel dots down here. Here's my finished layout. Thank you so much for watching. Can you see the boo-boo that I did here? I have to reprint the picture. Here is some close-ups and Thank you so much for watching. If you want to keep on watching, there's two more videos on screen right now. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Bye.